After a nasty encounter deep in Corita space, I have an injured pilot, back in 76 days, a dead pilot, back never, and two totaled necks. The others aren't much better. Do I try to do another job short a pilot in busted equipment, or sell my toys for gas money to get home? Mech Warrior has a lot of these kind of choices, and it's pretty easy for a few bad ones to leave you stranded and in the red. Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries has you taking control of a down and out mercenary company after your father gives you a tutorial and then dies. Dad, we're coming. No, leave now. I feel like he could have just ejected there, but we have a revenge plotline to get started. It's not Shakespeare, but it's a serviceable plotline that I'm not going to spoil much here. You are then tasked with slowly rebuilding the mercenary company from the ground up as you buy, sell, and shoot your way across the inner sphere, a constantly at-war chunk of post-utopian galactic society. The game is half giant robot fights and half interstellar business management. There are several different factions to work for in this galaxy whose opinions of you will change according to your actions. There's the five main houses along with independents, pirates, rebels, farmers, unions, it sounds complicated, but the big houses are the only ones you really need to worry about. They control large sections of space, and their opinions of you affect store prices in that region and combat zone repair cost. So it's good business to stay on their non-murdery side. It's a bit of a balancing act, as every mission will be for one faction and against another. You find yourself in a lot of morally gray scenarios, too. I could defend the coalition of farmers from a nefarious trading company trying to raid their resources, but the trading company also wants me to be the one who raids them. I'll definitely be the bad guy here, but the Coalition of Farmers doesn't offer a lot, and the shipping company is offering a lot more money for a much easier job. Sorry, innocent civilians, you should have had more money. Lance target confirmed. Firing. Goblin won't judge. Kill. Nice work, Commander. Money, or sea bills as they're called here, really are the lifeblood of the entire experience. You're a mercenary after all. Literally everything you do costs money. Even making money costs money. Your mechs aren't okay at the end of missions. That damage is going to stay unless you repair it. And if you got an arm blown off, those weapons are going to need replaced too. Those aren't cheap. Plus, if you're in a combat zone, those repairs are going to cost a lot more and take longer. So you can travel out to an industrial hub to do repairs, but that costs money too. Also more time. Jumping to other systems charges you for gas money and it takes weeks, meaning there's less time before your pilots need paid and upkeep costs need taken care of. Oh yeah, you need to hire pilots too. Having a full person squad or lance is always a good idea. The pilots all have unique skill sets and a different maximum level they can reach. The more expensive pilots are going to be the best bang for your buck. They can also die though, which means you'll be down a pilot, but at least they're not taking a paycheck anymore. The pilots even have different personalities, backstories, and some differing lines of dialogue, even if most of it is interchangeable. I would have liked to form even more personal relationships with these pilots. Being able to chat with them or even see them hang out around your barren hub ship would be great, but what's here isn't bad. So all in all, I really like the business management side of Mech Warrior. It adds some much-needed depth to a game that would otherwise be about slamming giant robots into each other over and over again. So I'm halfway through the script now, and I haven't even mentioned the combat yet. So how is it? It's a blast. There's a crazy amount of different mechs to drive and customization you can do, meaning you can experiment and try new things seemingly forever. The first thing you'll likely notice is the movement on these things is kind of clunky and takes some getting used to. This is on purpose, though. It may look like a third-person shooter when you're using the drone camera, but it's really not a third-person shooter. These things are glorified tanks and control as such. You accelerate and don't stop unless you brake. Your torso moves independently and can lead to you running into terrain and getting stuck while you slowly back out. Some guns are mounted on your torso and some on your arms. Your arms are much more free to aim, meaning you have two different reticles for chest and arm weapons. 
which can be a little confusing at first, but it would be hard to aim six guns at once if four of them were duct taped to your tits. These things are a little strange to get used to at first, but mastering them is the core skill of the game. When you get good at movement, you know when to skillfully turn your torso to avoid your expensive weapons getting destroyed and spreading the damage around. The first big mech you get even has a dedicated shield arm to subtly teach you this. Learning the dance of being able to strafe an enemy while mitigating damage feels great when you finally get it down. There's also terrain cover, buildings, and giant walls to maneuver around to take cover in in firefights. The trees even block projectiles. So the fights themselves can have a lot of depth, and it's honestly the most addictive part of the game. The missions in which all this combat take place, though, can get pretty repetitive. There are only five types of non-story mission, and it's six if you have the DLC, but we'll get to that. Speaking of repetitive, I think now's a good time to mention the sound design. The music in the game is... meh. It's all hard rock guitar riffs mixed with some synths here and there, which works fine for the industrial art aesthetic of the whole universe, but it gets pretty bland and generic after a few hours. Just mute it and put on whatever music you'd have in your giant robot cockpit. Ready for war, Joe. How you wanna go As for the weapon sounds, they can be kind of hit and miss. The auto cannons sound big and intimidating. You can even hear them being reloaded. but a lot of the weapons lack the bassy thud you would expect from a walking death machine. New target, Vulcan. There are some special story missions, but they mostly boil down to doing the same things you do in every other mission, but with some admittedly well-acted voiceover lines on top. There's the city, Commander. Looks like our contact and his forces have already set up a perimeter. Incoming message from Vaughn. Patching it through now. Commander, nice to meet you in person. As you see, my troops and I have garrisoned the city already. I'll be coordinating the garrison on field here and my riflemen. Every mission seems to be go here, smash stuff, wait for enemies to file in, blow them all up, that kind of thing. The maps are also randomly generated and huge leading to a lot of walking around, and God help you if you picked a heavy mech for this mission. The random generation also leads to you facing the wrong direction when you spawn almost every time, which isn't a big problem, but I did notice it after spawning facing towards the ocean for about the hundredth time. Also, the cities in the game are fairly copy-paste and have no highways or roads connecting them or anything like that, which would have been nice to see. Some of the heavier mechs top out at around 30 kilometers per hour, so you could have a long hike to your next destination. Sometimes picking a lighter, faster mech makes more sense for the mission types that require a lot of travel, but then you run the risk of not being armored enough to take everything on. Missions also have different tonnage limits, which means you can't just take four of the largest mechs in the game into every mission. Your loadout requires some thought and strategy if you want the best result, and I like that. The missions can have some weird problems too, though. On defense missions, sometimes your tanks will get stuck a mile out and you'll have one enemy left and you'll just be gone. I found this guy waiting around the other side of a mountain for me at the end of a defense mission when I had one enemy left to kill. He was upside down. You can negotiate payout at the beginning of every job you take you get more or less negotiation points based on how much that faction likes you. You can argue for higher payout, damage coverage, or salvage rights. Even airstrikes, if you have that DLC. Always max out the salvage rights first, though. You can salvage mechs you wasted to either sell off or add to your collection. You can also pick up a lot of replacement weapons, meaning salvage rights will always net you more money than boosting your payout. Getting new mechs and weapons feels earned because of all this money management and negotiation, though. Sure, a brand new mech is expensive, but dropping a few million on a new one you've never seen before is almost always worth it. And if you don't like the new one, you can always sell it off. There's always different mechs to try out. 
Even more if you have that DLC. Okay, so I've brought up this DLC a lot at this point, and there's a reason for that. It's really good, but I feel it includes a lot of features that really should have been included in the game at launch. It is called Heroes of the Inner Sphere, and includes new mechs like you would probably expect, but also includes special versions of mechs called Hero Mechs. It adds beachhead missions, which are the best designed missions in the game. It adds cantinas to some star systems, which allow you to take side jobs, which you can do while doing everything else, and it makes making money easier. Cantina missions also have their own leveling mechanic, which unlocks special upgrades you can apply to mechs for money investments, which is a great RPG mechanic for a game about customizing giant robots. It also adds a whole new career mode where you can start as being aligned with one of the great houses. These are all great additions, but I wonder just how many people thought the game was empty and repetitive without them. There's so much here that would have made this game great at launch. That's the other problem, though. This game was an Epic Store exclusive for its first year, and because of that, I didn't even know it existed until it dropped on Game Pass, which gave me the benefit of not having to buy the game and DLC at full price, just the DLC. Problem is, I think if this game launched with all of these features on all platforms last year, it would have been a hit. But now I feel like it's doomed to be forgotten by everyone except Battletech enthusiasts and people who saw the title Mech Warrior and had fond memories of the old Xbox titles. I was in that latter group. So would I recommend you play Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries? If you're willing to shell out for the DLC, I'd say yeah. There are not a lot of giant death machine business management sims out there, but this one does it the best, hands down. I know that there are other Battletech games out there, but most of them seem to be turn-based RPGs, which is fine, but nothing really beats the feeling of getting into the cockpit of one of these things and controlling it yourself. It also has co-op, so you can play with your friends. And I realize now I forgot to put that at any point in the script, but there it is. I really hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, all those things that drive that engagement for YouTube. I'd really like to make this a thing that I keep doing, so uh, any support would be very much appreciated, and if you made it to this point in the video, you probably liked it anyways, so give me a thumbs up. Thanks, and I'll see you next time for whatever I decide to review next. I literally headbutt that mech to destroy it. <laughs>